We continue to preview the 2024 college football season. Our stop today is Lamoni, Iowa. We get to visit with Patrick Ross, who is in his third season, heading to his third season with the Graceland Yellow Jackets. Coach, six and five last year, four and seven the year before that. So I, this is one of those things I, I mention it uh, occasionally, trending the right direction. So things seem to be going well for you. Talk a little bit about last year. Joey, you know, with, with with a season like we had last year, there's a lot of things to build off of. At the same time, there's a lot of disappointment. You know, I know when you when you look at us as, as a program and, you know, three years ago, they lost every game they played on average of 55 to eight. They lost 30 straight football games. So when you look at six and five, two years after we got here, you know, from the outside, it's like, oh, yeah, you're, you guys are doing great. But but internally, we're struggling. Yeah, You know, that's not that's not our goal. That's not our expectation. Uh, you know, if you, if you look at how our games went this football season, you know, if, if we could have clutched up in a few situations and made the right plays at the right times, all of a sudden, you know, we're sitting at nine and two. You know, we had we had three games touchdown or less, and, and, and it wasn't a touchdown or less that just looked good. It was actual touchdown or less where we had the ball or they had the ball. If we got a stop, we win. If we had a score, we win. So it was some some really key opportunities there. And, and you know, we're sitting at nine and two in the playoffs. We're, we're still not, you know, ecstatic because the job's not done. We're not winning championships yet, but we're a lot closer than we were at six and five. So coming into this offseason, we knew we had we had a ton. We got to get a lot better. You know, we got to get a lot better. If we want to compete with Grandview and and and, and the, you know the other teams in the heart of America, we've got we've got to get better. So we had a lot a huge emphasis this spring on just really honing in on on finishing things and and being being better than we were a year ago because that's what it takes. Now we are growing. You know, we've had you know our, our key players have been in, in the same positions for you know two years, going on now year three, and a lot of times that's when you take that huge jump. Is when you're going, you know, a third year starter, you should see see some serious uh, increases in, in output. And so we're really hoping that the guys we have in place, we've, we've been a young football team, are going to are going to continue to grow. And and hopefully, you know, is if 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 things go the way we plan them to, plan on them to, we're going to be playing deep into the into the winter. The season last year bookended by three game winning streaks. You open the season with three straight. And you close the season with three straight as well. So you, you've talked about the spring a little bit. Let's go ahead and preview this year then as you bring back players that on the channel here, we've already mentioned, by the way, Coach. I mean, uh, one of the top returning quarterbacks, Cade Ross, coming back off a season in which he was fourth in the NAI, 285-plus yards passing per game, 36 touchdown passes. And another player, Gerald Monroe, who we have as one of the top five returning wide receivers in the NAIA this this year as well and he played only four games for you last season had 11 receiving touchdowns 10 in his first three games so uh, I'd like to start with those two players and and take us through your offense well they kind of they kind of rely on each other to be honest you know Gerald's one of the most incredible players I've ever coached you know I've been I've been doing this a long time and you know in my time as a NAI and division two coach I put 16 guys in the NFL uh, you know that have, have have signed NFL contracts and 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 Gerald G, we call him G. G is among the best of those guys. I mean, he is that kind of a talent. And it's not only what you see Saturday. What you see Saturday is obviously a representation of who he is. But really, the knit, the knit and gritty of him is is what you see every day during practice. He does the same thing. He's, he, every day he amazes me in practice. He practices so hard. He's the best blocker on our football team. He's he's intense. Uh, you know, and if we have Gerald. In those three tight games we lost last year, who knows what would have happened because he's just a difference maker. He's, he's to me, in my opinion, he's the best player on the field, uh, basically almost every week, you know. And and so we allow him to to have the freedom to to be a football player, you know. And and it helps that, that he and his quarterback are on the same page. So Cade has has had a couple of really nice years for us, and you know I think the most important thing when you look at what what Cade's able to do is is his. You know, you look at his completion percentage, it might not be as high as some people would want it to be. But in our offense, we're run and gun. We're go for it. You know, every 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 play we have, there's an opportunity to to check it and make a throw. And and so we're going to we're not we're going to take some chances because those same chances is why, you know, he was able to throw 36 touchdowns last year is because we, we, we we're not afraid. You know, we're not afraid. We're going to be aggressive. We're going to win it being aggressive. Or if, we're, if we lose, we're going to lose being aggressive. That's just who we are by nature. Um, that's who that's who that's how our offense operates. And and Cade's been, you know, he's been, you know, the, the other thing about Cade that, that really helps our offense is is elusive is, is elusivity. <laughs> he's very elusive, in other words. <laughs> he's you know, he's not very big, you know, he's only 175, 180 pounds on a on a great day soaking wet. But at the end of the day, it, 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 he's kind of tough to tackle for guys. He's slippery back there, can make good decisions. And he, when he's moving, he's actually looking still to throw it. So that gives our chance, our guys a chance to make plays because the defensive coaches in our league are very, very good, uh, just like they are in a lot of leagues. Um, so it's not like every, it's going to be open right off the bat. We're going to get to our drop back and, 
And there's going to be a lot of times that people just aren't open. You know, the windows are really small. So, so in this day and age, quarterbacks have to be able to buy some time and create opportunities to get open and then be able to throw it on the run and be creative. And that's, those are a couple of things that K does extremely well. You know, there's other parts of his game that he's focusing on this summer, um, the mental part of, of some things and just getting just overall just trying to be a better quarterback. And so he's, that's his focus this summer. But I think with the two of them and the other additions that we have offensively, I think we're going to be very difficult to stop. You know, the, obviously, you know, you, you got to keep growing. They got to get better. They can't sit back and, and look at what they've done over the last two years. They got to focus on how we're going to get this team over the top. How are we going to reach our goals? How are we going to find a way to beat the teams that beat us? You know, Grandview is one of the best teams in the country. They give us problems. So we got to find a way. How, how can we beat Grandview? Because if we can't beat Grandview, we can't win a national title. You know, so that's that's our that's our goals. We want to win every game we play. Uh, so we've been there's been a big focus on, on us on how we get over the top. We're speaking now with Patrick Ross from Graceland going into his third season with the program. The offense, uh, it, it is dynamic. It's it's one of those things. I like that that run and gun style. It's, I'm, I'm sure the, the fans enjoy watching that too because that that's something that's uh, pleasing when, when it's all connecting like that. On the defensive side of the ball, Isaiah Slaughter, which by the way, great name for a defensive player. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> Led your team in tackles last season, uh, had four interceptions, uh, a number of breakups, and uh, also a, a scoop and score, too. Let me ask you, he's returning, and, and I want to talk about the defense, too, but this is one of those things where, and, and I, I really want your opinion on this, Coach, uh, you know, when if, if you have a defensive back that's leading your team in tackles, is that a stat that uh, might say, hey, listen, we, we let the ball get through that line a little bit more than we wanted to? Well, Isaiah is like a nickel, so he's more like an outside linebacker for us. Um, so, so, but he does. I mean, he's he's so versatile; he can do a little bit of everything for us. But he is an outside. He's listed as an outside linebacker. Um, he's, but he's a dynamite player. He's tough. He's what he's what we're trying to build our defense around. We recruited him, you know, out of out of Wentzville, um, Missouri, and he had some good opportunity. He had some good D two offers, and and committed to us late. And he's been everything we've wanted him to be. He's a dynamic playmaker. He plays with intensity. You know, we built our, our, our football program off being tough. That's one of the toughest kids I've ever coached. You know, he doesn't miss a down. He plays hard every snap. He's so – he's just a, he's just a bona fide football player. And he's a throwback guy. You know, he, you know, he doesn't try to be, get out there and be all pretty. He's just a tough throwback <laughs> football player, and that's kind of who we built our defense around. All right, Coach. T t tell us a little bit more about that defense. I know I led with uh, Isaiah and uh, other players coming back. You said there were some additions as well. Yeah, yeah. So I think that, you know, we have a, a dynamite leader and a dynamite player at all three levels of our defense. And that's that's important as, as you as you're building your team. You know, we struggled on defense a couple of years ago, we really struggled with giving up big plays. We struggled finishing tackles. Last year, we went through phases where we were really good on defense and, and phases where we weren't, you know, but the last down the stretch, the defense was incredible. You know, we we won our last football game, I think, I don't know, 10-7 or something like that. And that's that wasn't like us. You know, we're a scoring team, but we needed them to step up and do what they had to do. And down the stretch last year, they got it done. But if you look at, you know, the front level of our defense, it's it's kind of anchored by EJ Barrera, who's had all American, first team all American type numbers last year, number two in sacks, number two in TFLs, bunch of tackles, had the game winning interception when he dropped in 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 into zone against Benedictine when we beat number six ranked team in the country. He got the game winning interception as a defensive end. So he's just a he's just a dynamite football player. He's explosive. Again, it's not huge, but at the end of the day, you know, it would it be nice if he was six four, two sixty? Yes. But it, it but it, you know, he probably wouldn't be here if that was the case. He is just a he's just a dynamite football player that has a nose for the ball and, and finds ways to make plays, uh, you know. And then a, a guy on our back end who he's going into his fourth year as a starter here. He's a guy that we inherited, thank goodness, because he's been a huge asset to our football team. But Brett Whitehall uh, had an, a, an amazing year last year. He got hurt, I think it was game three or four, but I think his record as a starter for us last year and games that he played, and he might have been he might have been six and one. Um, you know, he, the middle of the season, he got hurt. We didn't have him, and, and, and it showed. You know, we weren't, we, we weren't, as, we didn't communicate well on defense when he wasn't in there. We were giving up a couple of big plays here and there. So he makes a huge difference, and he's coming back for his senior year. And he's graduated already. He's taken his his master's program, and but he gets everybody lined up. He's a, he's old school too now. We got a, we got a bunch of these old school guys on defense, heavy hitters, just physical, um, understand the game. So, you know, that's kind of that's that's kind of the gist of where we all defensive. We have to improve in the secondary. So we had a good run there. You know, we got some other linebackers that are, you know, Jacob Morales is going in to be a third year starter. We added we added a, a couple of key guys. We had a couple of key guys we haven't seen yet that we're expecting good things out of. But, you know, college football is crazy. You know, you expect a lot out of them when they're coming in. But who knows when they get in there and learn their system. So we're, we're basing, uh, you know, 
our expectations off of the team that we have, that we, the team that we know, the guys we've had playing for us. And I think these guys we have adding to the mix are just going to take us over the top. Exactly. Coach, special teams last year, two for four field goals, attempted only four on the on the season. From a punting perspective, and I mean, I know that you don't want to have to punt the ball that often, but if your punter can flip the field, that's a good thing. Parker Kerf uh, averaged more than 38 yards per punt. Cade Ross, by the way, uh, you were talking about him being elusive. Well, he was able to punt the ball as well a number of times and averaged better than 37 yards per punt too. So you have some players coming back on special teams. Yeah, well, it was just two for four, two for four field goals. I'm not much of a field goal guy. Yeah, I told you the aggressive style. Uh, I've been like that for years. I've had incredible kickers over the years. Incredible. I'm, a couple of my years at Lindenwood, we were really good at kicking, but you know they get 50 extra points, but maybe two or three field goals because we're we're, we're aggressive. You know, you know, we're we're I, I like to think we're a really really good football team, but we're not going to win with field goals. We're going to win scoring touchdowns, and it's the same thing I think we have moving forward. Is we have got we have got some great kickers. We really do have some good clutch kickers. We, we won a game last year off of a kick, um, so I feel, I feel confident in our kicker. So me going for it has nothing to do with them. It's all me. It's, a, it's just the way my style is. So, so we're, we're, we're aggressive. We're going we're gonna to go for it. So field goal kicking is not as is, is prevalent probably for us as it is for other people, but it did win us a football game last football season. Um, it was Benedictine. We, we, had, we had a kick uh, yeah, something like 40 yarder with seven seconds left, and we made it to, to win the football game. Um, key things to be able to kick in the end zone too. You know, we want to re- take some relief off of that that kickoff team and make sure we're getting back. So, so we do have you know Jacob, our, our, our kicker coming into the to the season, is is very good at kickoffs. He's money at field goals. Um, on the punting side, same thing. You know, I don't I don't want to punt. That's this that's I don't want to punt. I want to go. I want to be I want to be aggressive. I want to get first downs. Uh, so so I remember one year when we were at, at Lindenwood, we had probably the best punter in the country. Unfortunately, he only got to punt 12 times for the whole season. So I'm hoping Parker has a year like that. Parker and Kay, we have maybe 12, 15 punts on the on the football season. Um, but no, that that is important. We got to flip the field. We got to make sure our protection's good. You know, and the reason Cade has those punts, Parker's a, Parker's a really good punter, but Cade has those punts when we're you know we're in a situation where we could go for it, not go for it. So you look at our fourth down attempts, it's pretty high, right? So we'll get to the line of scrimmage and we'll make a decision right then. And that's why if we're going to go for it. We we go for it. If not, Kate punts it. You know, so it's no it's no secret on 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 how we run that philosophy. Um, but thank God he's he's able to to successfully get the ball off and get it in the right spots. And 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 but you know at the same time, I'm not afraid to go for it at any point during the field. You know, especially if we're playing good or bad on defense. If we're playing really bad on defense. It's a great time to go for it because you're giving up yards anyway. So, but if we're playing really good on defense, then you know sometimes we'll we'll choose to pin them back. But you, you watch a a, a Grayson football team or a Coach Ross coach football team and and there's going to be some things that make you go, what, what is he doing? Why is he going for that? But it's strategic. <laughs> it's strategic. It's studied. And, and you know, when it, when it works, it's great. When it doesn't work, go play defense. Well, I, I, I love that. It's going to, and it keeps the defense on its toes always. Yes. Uh, when you have that coming up. Well, the, the defense is going to get a chance to be on its toes. I mean, pretty soon now. We are about two and a half months away from the season opener for Graceland. First two games on the road out of conference. You, you go to Doan. Uh, take on uh, a team outside the conference there, and then back in conference play. So that was August 31st, September 7th, uh, at Missouri Valley for that one. You get things started on the road. Talk about the opening to your season. Yeah, you know, it's, it's tough. It's, it's, this thing happened to us last year, too. Our first two games last year were, were staffs and coaches we didn't know. Central Methodist was our first game. They got Coach Brown, new coach in there. Um, and we got the same challenge this year. So Doan got new new coaching staff, so – you know, we've tried to figure out what we think they're going to do is schematically, but we really don't know. So really our preparation is just going to have to be on ourselves. And same with Missouri Valley College, our first conference game uh, against Missouri Valley. They got a new coaching staff. So um, he's been in the league before. Uh, so I think we have a, a, a little bit of an idea what he's going to do, especially on defense. But offensively, we don't know what they're going to do. So so really, it's just the first couple of weeks. We, we just got to worry about ourselves, focus on us, and and, and be the best football team we, we can be. But to me, that's exciting. You know, I, I love to strategize and and work against, you know, our opponents and their film. But at the end of the day, if you don't have good dudes, you ain't going to win anyway. So so we really uh, focus on us, focus on what we do, and, and execute. Well, Coach, from this perspective, it's an outsider's perspective, but I think you have some dudes. On your team. We got some dudes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to be fun to watch. Graceland, the Yellow Jackets get things, gets things 
get things underway. I'll get this out. August 31st, again on the road against Doan. Coach Patrick Ross, thank you so much for taking time with us this season. We will, of course, follow the Jackets this year as we have been, and we look forward to, to seeing them on the field. Thanks again for being with us on Midwest Sportsnet. Awesome. Thank you, Joe. We appreciate what you do and, and follow your, 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 your YouTube and your podcast and everything. It's awesome. We appreciate you.